What's up, Creighton fans? I'm John Niatawa with the World Herald, here to break down the latest news on the recruiting front. Creighton landed a commitment on Wednesday from four-star guard Trey Alexander, really talented shooting guard from Oklahoma City, and he becomes the latest top-tier recruit to join a pretty star-studded recruiting class. Actually, it's the best class according to the rankings. Now, the rankings haven't been around forever, obviously, and we know that they're at times a little flawed, but according to the recruiting rankings, the online recruiting rankings, Creighton's class is the best in recent history. Uh, Heading into Wednesday, the Jays were at number seven nationally, according to 247 Sports, number 12 nationally, according to Rivals, and now you add Trey Alexander into into the mix. And like I said, this guy can score at all three levels, uh, can score off the bounce, drive inside, create for other, for teammates, for, other, for, for, for himself. I mean, he's just a really good dynamic wing scorer, uh, a piece that Creighton was looking for in the recruiting trail this year. Uh, they needed um, a guy, I mean, think about who Creighton lost this last season uh, as, as part of that you know, dynamic, uh, amazing sort of core group of players. Um, Mitch Ballock, Marcus Segarowski, Denzel Mahoney, Damian Jefferson. That's a lot of firepower on the perimeter. Guys that can do a lot of different things that are pretty versatile. So Creighton was looking for players to kind of step right into that role. And Trey Alexander fits that. So average 23. I mean, he kind of did it all for Heritage Hall High School in Oklahoma City. Uh, They made it to the state championship game in their class in Oklahoma. 23 points a game, 8 rebounds, 4 assists. Um, he's a top 100 player in the country for a reason. Number 73 on the 247 Sports Composite Ranking. So, really good player. And then you add him, obviously, to the class that I was just referencing, which includes Ryan Nemhard, point guard, uh, originally from Toronto, played at Montverde Academy. He's a top 100 player. John Christophilis, maybe a little bit lower ranked, uh, according to the, the experts, but... Um, He's got a lot of potential. First off, he can shoot the ball, lights out shooter from Seattle. But uh, he, I mean, he initially sort of uh, exploded on the recruiting scene, but then suffered an injury. Um, so I think that he's he's one of those players you kind of circle and, and say, okay, what what does a year of development do? Um, you know, what happens when you put him around uh, some some really elite talents and and get him within this the system that really fits his skill set. Uh, how much does he blossom? So he's a player who could improve dramatically, I think. Uh, Arthur Kaluma is technically the highest rated recruit in the online recruiting errors for Creighton. He was number 45 on the 247 composite uh, rankings. 6'8", forward, again, another versatile player who can score inside and out, can put the ball on the floor and make your life miserable with his playmaking ability as a, uh, for, for a defense. And Mason Miller is the, uh, the, the other uh, talented recruit coming in. Uh, 6'9", forward from Memphis, where his dad, one of, one of the places, one of the stops where his dad, Mike Miller, starred at as an NBA player. 17-year NBA vet Mike Miller was, and, and now his son, Mason Miller, is headed to Creighton. So this class, I mean, it, it's, it's obviously early. These guys haven't even gotten on campus yet, and, and there's going to be some strength training needed, and some um, they're going to have to get acclimated to a higher level of competition. They're going to have to get acquainted with Creighton's scheme and system. So there's plenty of learning to do and plenty of growing to do, but you like sort of the foundation that they have and uh, the fact that a lot of them played at an elite level. They won at an elite level, and uh, they picked Creighton over some other really, some brand name suitors and some other teams that obviously have a lot of pedigree and history as well in the college scene. And they decided that Creighton was the place where they wanted to be. So it says a lot about Creighton, the, the improvement that the Jays have done on the recruiting trails, on the recruiting trail, sort of elevating their profile as a program. And, uh, you know, I guess, I guess Creighton capitalized on the success that it's had over the last two seasons on the court. You think about the Big East Championship the first time in school history. The Jays clinched that in 2020. Well, they shared the title with Seton Hall and Villanova. But uh, that was sort of a momentous moment for the program to kind of cross that off the list, off, off the uh, to-do list, so to speak, and uh, to celebrate it on a, you know, with fans rushing the court. I mean, it's a scene that I'm sure caught the attention of a lot of people who follow college basketball, a lot of prospective players, uh, recruits across the country. So that happened in 2020, and then obviously in 2021, the Jays broke through and made their first Sweet 16 since 1974. So you have that kind of success on the court. You're able to sell that to recruits, the example of what it can be what it looks like, what it could look like, 
is right there in front of their face. And so Creighton was able to do that. And I think the other notable thing about this class, just the compilation of it, um, maybe from a behind the scenes thing, is that Creighton did this without bringing recruits on campus because of the pandemic and, and the COVID restrictions. A lot of this was Zoom recruiting. That was kind of the theme of the 2021 recruiting class. While few of those athletes maybe had, got an opportunity to visit campus before everything shut down, it was uh, a recruiting dead period for basically uh, more than a year. It, the, the recruiting dead period just lifted um, for, uh, in Division One. So the Jays, one of their best selling points, and that's the case for a lot of programs maybe in this part of the country or who are – don't necessarily have like a New York City to sell or Philadelphia, like Omaha, Nebraska. If you're recruiting outside this region, it, maybe a player might need to actually see the campus to know what you're talking about, to, to know what it is about, what the Creighton uh, community is about, and, and to sell your culture. It becomes a lot easier to do that with, with the uh, with the players right there on campus, and you're able to kind of show them, hey, this is this is where this is. The Creighton wasn't able to do that. They had to do all their recruiting on Zoom and uh, you know, phone calls, text messages, building relationships that way. So um, you commend the coaching staff for being creative and finding a way to get it done uh, with some difficult circumstances, circumstances that everyone had to deal with, certainly. Uh, but, you know, obviously Creighton was able to capitalize and build a really good recruiting class. So it'll be interesting, as I said, to see how these guys grow. And one of the keys for next year, obviously, Creighton's going to be really young. And uh, it's going to have a group, seven newcomers at this point, where it's a group that's going to need to grow together, build some chemistry, some co continuity. But certainly there's a lot of talent within the program. And although Creighton did lose all five starters from last year, um, a bunch of sort of memorable and iconic Creighton legends, some players that will be remembered around here for a long time, uh, it seems that they have found a way to replenish that talent with more talent. And uh, so we'll see how these guys gel over the course of the next month, few months. So for the Omaha World Herald, I'm John Niatawa. Thank you for watching.